In this video, we're going to take a look at the unit status menus. Built in here, there are actually two different ways of uh, monitoring the status of a unit. Uh, you have holding your mouse over it and then pressing and holding on the control key, which is going to bring up the small window here, which will let you know the name of the unit, its current course, speed, its current status, its fuel, as well as what its current magazines as well as weapons are available. In this case, I can see on my surface, I have four long range, I have 169 medium range, and I have 322 short range. It also tells me whether or not my sensors are turned on. At this time, my sensors are not. So I'm going to go ahead and pause, and then we're going to take a look at the other unit status menu. I'm going to press this little arrow up here on the top right side of the screen, and that's going to bring down this menu here. Now, there's a significantly greater amount of information available on this particular menu. We have the name of the unit, again, if we chose to rename it. It will instantly represent itself up at the tippy top. Keep in mind the people on the other side, the ones looking at your units, will not get this. They will only get this down here. We have the experience of the unit. We have a photograph, assuming it's available. We have a database entry, should we choose to click on it and uh, take a look at any information about it. We also have the unit message log. Now what this does is this brings up an individual message for the ship that allows us to keep track of everything this particular ship has seen, anything that's going on as far as the AI, any sort of damage. At this time, nothing's happened to it. We even have the ability to filter it out to study exactly what this ship understands at this particular given time. Scrolling down from there, we have what side it's on, its present course, uh, this is true, its current speed as well as its current throttle. In this case, uh, we're set to cruise. We have our damage, right now we're at zero. We have our damage control menu, which we can bring up to see if anything has been hurt. We have our ability to see an overall systems bar, and this will start to change color as systems get damaged. For example, if I were to uh, take one of these particular tor torpedo tubes out of action here, we'll go ahead and just destroy both of those. You will see now they have a little red bar to notify me the fact that this ship has sustained damage. Now, should this uh, particular ship be on fire or anything along those lines, you will see an extra bar for flooding as well as fire should that occur. Below that, we have the magazines, which indicate any magazines that are on board. Note that we have different magazines for different weapon systems, depending on how everything is stored on board the ship. To the right of that, we have any stored boats. In this particular case, we have a very, very small dock if we wanted to create a small little launch. Uh, for example, if I wanted to go ahead and uh, throw in, uh, let's put an RHIB in here. Add two. Now, if I were to go into this, you'd see that they're both going to be visible. And again, I did that by clicking boats. We have aircraft. Uh, if there are any aircraft present, for example, if we want to add an SH-2 in here, this is a quick little example, you will see that this will be listed over here. Now, if I were to launch that particular aircraft, uh, this would no longer show a zero out of one. These two buttons are only visible when we are using the mission editor, which we're doing right now. Below that, it's going to tell us what its assigned base is. Uh, if we wanted to assign this particular ship a base, we'd have to create a base first, and then we'd have the ability to assign that directly. So for example, if I wanted to come in here into Los Angeles, let's go ahead and create a facility. Let's go ahead and type in a pier. Get ourselves an extra large pier. That looks pretty good right there. It's facing the wrong direction. I'll go ahead and fix that real quick. That looks pretty good. Now, if I click on the ship, right click, I can now assign it a particular base, like new home base. And go ahead and click on it. And now you can see that that vessel has that as its new home base. Directly below that, we're going to have a page for sensors, communications, as well as weapons. If I click sensors now, you'll notice it gives me a list of all the different sensors. And if any of these are checked, that means they are currently actively emitting. I will be dealing with MCON at a later time. Next to that, you have comms, which is going to list all the different types of comm devices we have on board. If we need to add one in the scenario editor, we can come down here and do it that way. On the far right, we have a list of all the weapons. Uh, notice our two damaged weapons are marked in red to say that at this current time, we can't actually use them. Also note, when I click on these, it's going to tell me if I wanted to. I can take a look at the database entry page. It'll also tell me how much ammunition I have available and whether or not the particular weapon is ready to fire. So for example, if we had a pretty long engagement and we completely depleted our 20 millimeter here, you can see that this was show it in gray since it's gone out. I can now say reload this, but there has to be ammunition available in one of the magazines on the ship in order for that process to actually begin. Over on the bottom side here, we have the ability to set the unit altitude and speed. Now, notice since we're a ship, we don't have any control over altitude, but we do have control over throttle. Now, keep in mind, this will override whatever we have set previously. So, for example, if I wanted to bring ourselves up to full speed, I could click on that, which is going to indicate full, and then the entire ship will start to accelerate. If I want to return to normal automatic speed, I can simply click here. Keep in mind, ships cannot travel at a speed unless they have a course assigned to them. Below here, we have all weapons available. Keep in mind, this also is going to include weapons that are on magazines and may not be able to fire. Below that, we're going to have a list of the current ship's fuel. In this case, you can see how we've got a significant amount. It tells us what types of fuel. We have about one week, one day, and about 4,200 nautical miles available at this current speed. Below that, we have our MCON, which gives us the ability to turn on different sensors. For example, if I wanted to turn on all sonars, I could disable Inherit from Parent. 
and I can simply click this button here, which would instantly activate the onboard active sonar. If I wanted to go to passive, I could click here, go ahead and shut that off. Keep in mind, depending on what your settings are as far as doctrine, some of this can get overwritten. Speaking of doctrine, directly below that on the unit status page is going to be our doctrine options. Uh, these are simply options that allow us to dictate the behavior of the particular unit. Uh, this will be covered a little later on. If you'd like to take a look at a slightly more detailed view, you can simply click on this, or if you prefer, you can press Control F9. Keep in mind, if you press uh, the Control F9 and uh, you have not had a unit selected, it will not actually bring that up for you. But again, you can come over here, control your radar, when you should release weapons, should the ship go ahead and return to base if it takes certain amounts of damage. And as I said, this will all be covered in a later video. Aircraft have a very, very similar status page as well. Again, if I would hold my mouse over and hold the control key, it will give you all the information you need to know. In this case, it tells us our course, tells us our speed, side, uh, what we have as far as weapon status, and you'll also notice that the radar in the bottom right is highlighted to indicate that it is currently emitting. Likewise, when I click on this unit, It'll give us the same type of details that we had on the ship just a little earlier. Only thing that's going to be different now is we have an altitude control. I can actually come in here and designate I want to be at medium altitude. I can change my cruise speed. I can do all those items. One thing worth noting, though, is this particular unit is a member of a group, and that may affect the other members of the group. So if I ever select the whole group as one, you'll actually notice that it'll tell me how many I've selected, their total weapons carried. It'll also give me an individual fuel display for each individual one that I can take a look at, as well as estimations as far as a fuel burn, time, and bingo fuel that we have located down here at the bottom. Below this, we have the same sort of stuff as far as a Group MCON. We also have the same items as far as doctrine. Keep in mind when these uh, particular aircraft are launched, they're going to be launched with whatever their mission doctrine is, which will set these values at a preset value. So that's about it as far as the unit status page goes.